Hey guys, in this video we're going to cover a better way to orient joints. Um, now sometimes you do something for say 10 years or so and then you learn a different or better way to do something that you probably could have done the whole time and you go, why didn't anybody correct me on this? Um, so this is something I just learned and some of you are probably going, yeah, duh. Uh, but uh, I just learned this recently and I'm going, how did I never know this before? Um, so before, if you've watched in my videos, uh, the way we oriented joints was, you know, you kind of plop your joints down and say we're making an arm, you go and, you know, place them. How do you want? Let's make, let's make it a little bit more arm-like than that. I'm going to zoom out here and come up and, you know, say that's my elbow and here's my wrist and I'd build something like that. And of course, none of my stuff is aligned, so I do a skeleton orient joint. Oh, let's get the top one too. Okay, so joints are oriented, but the LRAs may not be, you know, that might not be the angle my elbow bends at, so I could go into component mode, hit the miscellaneous button, the question mark one, to display the LRAs, and then rotate them to get them roughly where I want them. And and usually I'd make an end joint for the wrist, but we're just going to fudge this for the sake of demo. Um, so kind of equivalent with the other ones. Um, so, but that's the essential workflow I had, and that's what I was shown, and uh, I've been showing people, and, you know, movie studios, game studios, like they seem to use this method too. Nobody's ever corrected me on this, and I'm surprised by that, seeing how simple the alternative is. Uh, and the problem with this method is, particularly when I add IK, we'll see if it does it here. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, we're going to have bend the arm. It, yeah, here's here's the problem, is I'm y not getting you know, a single axis of rotation of just Y here uh, because the LRAs aren't all aligned to a single plane. You know, ideally where the elbow is bending, I should be able to draw, you know, a polygon plane through all three points um, and they should all line up on a, a single axis with that. Um, and they're not because they're all slightly rotated at different angles. If you look at them, you know, it's, that one's a little bit lower, that one's a little bit higher. Um, you know, it's close, but not perfect. And the problem is it not being perfect results in imperfect numbers, um, which if I just had an IK arm, not such a big deal. But when I start wanting to do things like have an FK arm and an IK arm and do FK IK matching, uh, and I've locked everything but the Y rotation on my elbow, and then I'm trying to match to an IK elbow that has Z rotation on it, that's where the, that problem starts to become an issue. Um, so the better way to do this is to kind of similarly, let's go ahead and draw out my joints if I'm going to do that, but I'm going to draw it in a straight line. I'm just going to snap it here to, uh, on the grid and go out in positive X along the grid here. It doesn't matter how far I drop them out at first, but I'm going to take them like this and I place the shoulder where the shoulder goes. And this is the, let's place the shoulder where the shoulder goes. And this is the part that I used to tell people never ever do when placing your skeleton. And now I'm going to do the complete opposite until you to totally do this. And I'm going to rotate it into place. Uh, and, you know, so if the elbow isn't long enough, we're going to uh, grab the elbow and I'm going to switch my move tool here. Uh, move tool is off on another screen. I'll yank it over here. Uh, I'm going to uh, switch it to, let's see, I think, believe I want it on local. Let's double check that that's right. But if on local, I'm moving it just X, yeah, we're only seeing the X value change. So now I'll change the length of it to where I need the length of it to be. But now I can rotate it to where, you know, I want it to be. And then when I rotate the elbow, I can make sure I'm only rotating in just the Y axis. Um, this will become important in a second. And we'll translate out the wrist. Yeah, so that's, again, only transiting an X. That's the key part, one, one single value there. Um, and let's say that's the position I want the arm in. I mean, you know, that's, that's why our arm is lined up. Um, but we want to be able to zero out rotations still, too. So if I open up the attribute editor here. Um, so here are my rotations. You can see my rotation values here. 
And here are my joint orient values. When you are orienting a joint, it is setting your joint orient values. So let's let's actually jump back real quick and see that happen. So here I've very sloppily just built an arm. And I say, you, you watch just this one at least, um, skeleton orient joint. And you can see it changes those values. Same down here. And we have no rotation values, which is what we want. Um, how is it doing that? Well, it turns out if you just copy that value and, whoops, not that one, and joint orient, paste in the same value, same thing, you're going to see it rotate here a second, and then zero out my actual rotations. You can see that's now in the same position with the joint orient where now I can zero it out, and that's all joint oriented is. And I never realized it was that simple, that this is basically a thing to be an offset for the rotations, kind of the same way when we build a control, we build a, a CT group, a, a control group. So the control group gets all the rotations on it. And then that way the, the actual control could be a child of that parent group. And the control itself is all zeroed out, but oriented the same way. Um, on joints, it's just built in that way. So again, on the elbow, I'm gonna copy the rotate Y position and paste it into the joint orient Y position. And I don't know how I ever, ever noticed this either, because I've worked with these values before. It just never clicked in my head that these are the same thing. Notice that pattern. And, and the wrist, in this case, we don't really need to worry about. But so here's the benefit again, is now if I add an IK handle tool to this, and I'm hopefully I'm not wrong just because I'm doing a live demo and all of a sudden I see this for the first time. But OK, so rotate the arm. And we get a single value there, just like I expected, thank god. Um, so that's the real difference. And again, you know, most of the time it's not going to screw anything up. If you're just doing an IK arm and that's all you're ever doing on your character, this other method's fine. Uh, you're not really going to run into any issues with it. But this is much cleaner, uh, just rotating it and transferring over the values. Um, and again, if you're doing FK, IK matching later, you're not going to run into the problem that you're going to run into with this arm. If, again, we IK this guy up and bend him to values again. Um, so just one more time, just so you guys see that again. So simple, it is stupid. Been doing this for over 14 years, never knew this. Place my joint, rotate it into place, you know, whatever axis I need to rotate to get it into there. Get the elbow into place to make it longer. You're going to translate uh, locally so it's using the orientation of its parent. Get it the right length. Again, you should only see it in this one value. You could also select this value over here in middle mouse drag to get it longer and make sure you're not dragging out another values. Uh, and rotate this one out to get in the right place. Yeah, so let's say that's right. But again, we're only rotating a Y. We're going to make sure that that's the only angle it's getting rotated at. Go in the attribute editor. Copy that. Copy the rotation Y. Paste it into joint orient Y and zero out all our rotations. Uh, in this case, we're only doing Y because that's the only rotation value, but you do, you wanna get all the rotations that are here plugged into down here. You just copy and paste them and then delete them out of rotate. And we'll do it again up here. Since we have a Y and Z, we'll copy Y and Z, paste them down here. Again, you'll see our arm move for a second until we Zero things back out, and you can make a script to make this much faster. That you just you know get these values and plug them in here and zero that out at once. That that would be the recommendation if you're doing this frequently. But um, now our joints are oriented, and we we're good for IK. So building a skeleton that is the way I would recommend, particularly for arms and legs. You know, for a spine, it's not going to matter because you're building that vertically. Um, so you know it's more about that S curve, and there's nothing really to align to to that. But for arms that are kind of out in multiple dimensions, uh, or legs that might be out at an angle, uh, fingers, anything else, uh, that's much better. Um, keep in mind which direction you build will affect which way uh, the joints are aiming. Um, so in this case, I, I'm building out um, in positive X because if I build out in positive and it depends which way you want aiming down in joints. So if I build a chain here aiming down in Z, you can see Z is aiming down my joints. 
So the direction you build it initially does matter. So uh, when I'm doing arms and legs, I'm always building them out to the side and then rotating them into position. Uh, and then for the other side, I'll just mirror this joint to get it to the other side. Um, but again, for a spine, that's not really ma gonna matter. And I would do it the same way that I've been doing it of click out a bunch of joints and do orient joint and get it into position that way. But uh, anyway, that's a quick little video on the better way to orient joints, the cleaner way, uh, the way that was probably always intended, but somehow I never knew about. Um, so hopefully you learned something new and uh, this is news to you. Uh, good luck out there guys and keep making great 3D work.